Welcome to Watercolor with Viv. In this video, it's the part two. We're going to be doing the berries, the stems, and the leaves. First, you want to wet your berries because this is going to be a wet on wet. Take a little bit of quinacridone red, quinacridone red, and just start dropping it in on the wet berries. And then take the tip of your brush, I'm using a number two pointed round, and just blend it out. And you'll want to do each one of the berries. This is the most tedious part of the whole painting, really, because there's so many berries and they're small. If you feel like you get a little too much paint in there, then just take a cotton swab and um, absorb some of it, lift some of the paint. And I'm just going to continue to do each berry. And um, if I feel like it needs a little bit more of the red, I'm just going to add the red in while it's still wet. Let the water do the work of the blending. Let it flow over the water and let it blend. And once this is dry, we're going to, once this is just the first layer, once we get the berries, all of the berries painted with the first layer of just um, clear water with red quinic quinacridone red. I cannot even say that word. Good gracious. Then um, we're going to let that dry, let that layer dry, and then we're going to come back in and add shadows. But for right now, we just basically want to get the berries, have some color on them, painting them all with um, the clear water and then the red, the Q red. We're going to call it Q red since I can't pronounce it. And let the water do the work. Let it flow over. If you want a little darker areas, add the darker areas with the tip of your brush. And then we'll let this dry. But for right now, we're just going to get all the berries, get that first layer down. And you don't have to be too careful with this layer. This is, is just the initial layer, so you don't have to hurry. You don't have to get too fussy with it because we're going to add more over more deeper layers over this so don't get too fussy with it now once it's dry you can take the same Q red and put it over the berries that are dry. Don't wet it first. We're doing wet on dry now. And then you'll just take your brush and smooth it out. Just a wet brush. Smooth it out. Blend it out. Um, and we'll just go around. Keep going around the berries. Adding shadows. And then smoothing it out here and there where we think it needs to be smoothed out. So there's not so many hard edges. Darkening up some areas. You really want to give it a good variation of lights and darks to make it look like it has form. It's one of those principles of art. And take your time. The berries are by far the, I think, the hardest and the most tedious part of this this painting because they're small and there's a lot of them and it's tedious work but once you get them done you'll be so happy and so pleased with the results and remember where you think the shadows would be where the berries overlap it'll be darker where the two berries overlap the berries underneath will be darker where the sun can't hit, where, where the sun's not shining, that part will be darker. So just keep in mind where your sun is, your source of light, and where it would be light and where it would be dark. Now I'm going to add the really dark, and I'm adding the a little bit of hooker's green to the red. And that's going to make the really dark shadow. Now with this, I wet the berry first, and then I just dropped in that mixture, and now I'm taking the brush and just smoothing out the edges. And you see it kind of starts to uh, blend in those hard edges that were underneath doing it this way. 
and um, still have the hooker's green with the red mixture this one this berry is dry we're doing wet on dry and then I'm just blending it with a damp brush blending out that hard edge and just kind of um, mixing it with my the very tip of my brush this one's still wet I'm just adding a little bit more darkness to it this is going to be another wet on dry the berry is dry but the and just putting the weight the wet paint straight on top of it doggone I can't talk today and you want to do each one of your berries putting in the shadows blending them out um, this time we don't want as many hard edges we're working toward a softer finish so when we do these berries we are going to take our brush and dampen it and just blend it out so that there's not so many just really hard edges we're starting to make the berry look more round blending out the hard edges softening it up some and giving it some dimension now I'm going to wet the berry and I'm going to add a little bit of transparent yellow because I just feel like the berry isn't warm enough with that red so I'm taking transparent yellow and I'm just um, wetting the berries and then I'm just flooding the transparent yellow over the whole berry just to warm it up gives it a little bit more depth a little bit more dimension and I, I just like to look better than just the plain red berries if you don't want to do that you don't have to if you like the berries the way that you have them I just like a little bit of yellow in there it also complements the the golden um, sides and belly of the chickadee so that's what I am doing just to warm it up some and to give it a little bit more harmony with the chickadee the red was just a little too stark but that golden transparent yellow really just really just picks it up a notch for me I'm adding a little bit of red while it's still wet and letting it just kind of bleed out here and there on some of the berries mix let it mix in with the yellow and that softens the berries even more right there I've got a little too much water and it keeps going on to my background so I keep having to dab it up a little bit with my paper towel and we'll just work around until we get all the berries nice and golden red smooth smoothed out some it really smooths out that those harsh edges adding just a little bit more darker red on some of these edges while it's still wet so that when it dries it'll dry with really soft but it'll be a little darker in some of those spots that berry is behind it so I'm keeping making sure it's dark and you'll just continue with this technique on all of the berries and you'll add shadows here and there while the yellow is still wet so that it'll blend even softer be really pretty again you don't have to put the yellow over your berries I just think it wakes them up a little bit gives them a little depth and it also creates a little more color harmony between the um, chickadee and the berries now we're going to start on the leaves and I've just got a little bit of cobalt blue mixed with hooker's green I wet the leaf it's really wet and I dropped in that mixture now I'm doing a little bit of green gold just on the edges of the holly leaf and we're going to let this dry and we're going to continue with each holly leaf doing the same method now I'm going to take a little bit of the green gold and mix it and just tap it into the very edges of the leaf and here and there just randomly because the leaves aren't solid green they've got some variations of green in them I'm gonna wet this leaf down the next leaf I'm gonna add the blue green mixture the cobalt blue with the hookers green just drop it in there randomly and 
And remember, we're going to let this layer dry and come back and add the shadows after it's dry. So work on each one of your leaves doing the same thing, putting in the blue-green mixture and the um, yellow-gold. Now we're up with our shadows next. We're going to darken in the leaf. We're just using a little bit of um, sap green here in a really watery mixture. We're going over the under layer which has been dried and just darkening it up, giving it a little bit more depth. And I'm just cleaning up the edges there. I don't like the way that edge looks, so I'm just cleaning it up. Now I'm taking the hooker's green and just adding in some shadow work. Just dropping it in while it's still wet so that um, it'll be a nice little shadow. I'm going to continue with the leaves, wetting them down. Remember the, the first layer's dry. Now we're adding the hooker's green just to get in some nice shadows around your hollies. And once it's wet, we're going to come back in with the hooker's green. Um, right now we're using a little sap green and a little green gold, and then the hooker's green is for the shadows. We're wetting it down. We're going to put in a hooker's green. And this one's mixed with a little bit of green gold, or gold green, green gold. And then the hooker's green right where it's really dark for the shadows. And doing all of that while it's wet so that it blends nicely. And we're going to continue working around the leaves until we get them all done. And we're doing the same thing with this one. We're remembering where the shadows are. You're thinking about where the shadows would be. Like underneath the little plop of snow that's on top. Underneath the berries it'll be a little darker. Um, the edges that are away from the sun will be a little darker. And I'm adding a little more green gold. And then while the green gold's wet, I'm just dropping in hooker's green. And just letting it blend together in a nice little mix. Next, I'm going <clears> to <throat> work on the stems. I'm taking a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm making a watery mixture and adding just a touch of the indigo blue and I'm going to do the little stem end of the berries the little belly button or navel whatever it's called and you, you just want to drop in some little dots just to indicate the little stem end the little navel on it you don't want to do a dot on every single berry because some of the berries are facing us and some berries are not now we're going to work on the stem, the branch of the holly tree. And we're just going to add a little bit of water, watery mix of the burnt sienna. And we're going to cover each stem and branch with the burnt sienna. And we're going to let this layer dry completely before we do the next layer. For, but we're going to get all these stems and branches covered with the burnt sienna first. That's going to be our underpainting. And we're carefully painting around where the snow drifts have landed on the, the holly. And this is just a really watery mix of the sienna. And then we're going to let that dry completely. Once it's dry, we're going to wet it down. And then we're going to take a little bit of burnt umber and just lightly tap it in in the very center of the, the branch and let it bleed out to the edges so that the edges will be a little bit lighter. And just wet the branch. It's a really simple technique. And then put the burnt umber right in the center. 
and let the water bleed it out to the edges. Let it flow out to the edges. But keep the concentration of the paint in the center with your brush. And that way it'll give it the illusion of being a rounded branch with the light coming from the back side of it. I'm just going to continue this branch to the edge. I didn't draw it there, but I'm just going to continue it to the edge. Then I'm going to add a little bit of the burnt umber. And I'm darkening it while it's still wet by dropping in a little more burnt umber into the shadows. Then we're going to do the last little branch that he's standing on. Same thing, wet the branch and then just drop down the center the burnt umber and let it spread out. Let the water do the work. Anytime you get, you can let the water do the work. Now we're going to work on the snow. We're going to do a really, really, really watery wash of the indigo and burnt umber mixture so that it's just really pale, really gray. And we're just going to use the tip of our number two brush. Just tap in there and make tiny little dots and shapes to indicate the shadows. And it really starts to make the snow look like snow instead of white blobs. It starts to give it a little more definition. Let's, let's go come in a little bit so you can see better. And you just tap the end of your brush just randomly in the areas that would be shadowed. And that just really brings out your snow, makes it look like little snow um, drifts on the leaves and the berries. Brent gives it that dimension so that it doesn't just look like white blobs hanging over the, the leaves and across the branches. And then you'll let that dry. And you might even want to come back and do a few more little dots here and there to darken up some of it right near the edges where the shadows would be. That's up to you. You do it. It's your painting. You do it the way you would like to do it if you want to try this painting. I'm just adding a little bit more in there. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.